How you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out Only Want You by the Eagles of Death Metal. It's a cracking tune. It's got one riff most of the way through the song. So once you get your way through that, you can play pretty much the whole thing. There's just a couple of points where you need to stop. I'm sure you can figure out the stops by listening to the original recording. Hey, Now, on a most basic level, if you're a real beginner, you can play this song with an A chord and a C chord. So it's literally A chord, C, A, C, two, three, four, A. Now, if you're going to play it that way, most of the kind of vibe of this tune is going to be the energy that you put into playing it, so probably your strumming hand. So even though you could just use those simple chords, you want to get going with your energy on the eighth note, so one and two and three and four and one and two. You can actually, you could leave your second finger down pretty much the whole way through there. So there's your A chord. If you leave second finger down, first finger is going to move to the first fret on the second string. Third finger is going to move to the third fret on the fifth string. So you can see that second finger works as a great anchor between A and C. Now, that's a nice, easy way for beginners to play it, but it's not the way it's happening on the record. In fact, I'm going to show you another way that's still not quite what's going on on the record, but sounds pretty much exactly right. Now, there's a kind of a riff. We're going to play an A chord using our first finger as a little bar. Okay, we're just playing strings five, four, and three. Hopefully, some of you will have learned this rock and roll pattern as part of my beginner's course, where we put the third finger down in the fourth fret of the fourth string for the A. So it's actually on the same fret as our first finger, the tip of our first finger. Often the blues thing is like this. In this case, one, two, three, four. So we're playing even eighth notes. One and two and three and four. But we'd put the, the third finger down on beats two and four. One and two. So what's going on on the original recording is this. Now what's happening in the actual riff is a little bit more complicated than that. It's not particularly difficult, right? But you need to spend a little bit of time doing it nice and slowly. The idea is this third finger going on and off like on a blues. Another kind of common blues thing is moving that third finger up to the fifth fret. So or using your little finger. Some people use their little finger. I'm normally lazy and just use my third finger, but it's up to you. Now, this riff is going one and two and three and four and... So, first finger, second fret of the fourth string for two strums. Third finger down in the fourth fret of the fourth string for two strums, still with the open A. Then third finger sliding up to the fifth fret, then for, for two strums, then open, and then we go to a C power chord. Okay, so first finger, third fret of the fifth string, third finger on the fifth fret of the fourth string. One and two and three and four and one and two. Now it's happening on, it's moving to the C on the and after four, and it's tied over so we don't play on beat one, and then we play even eighth notes again for the rest of the second bar of the riff. So nice and slowly. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And it looks like my dog's decided to join me. She likes the Eagles of Death Metal. You wanna come and say hello, Ziggy? Yeah. Okay, come on, up, six, up. There we go. So this is Ziggy. She's a massive fan of Eagles of Death Metal, aren't you, Ziggs? Hey, either that or you just really wanted a pat. I'm not sure which one it is. But can I finish the lesson now, darling? Hey, I'll take you for a... We can go and chase pine cones in a bit. Come on, down you go. Ziggs, come on. Go to bed. 
Go to bed. Good girl. Sorry about that, ladies and germs. Okay, now, where was I? This riff, nice and slowly. One and two and three and four and one. It's actually a little bit more complicated again than this, but this is where you want to start, okay? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Now, if you want to get real clever you can start to add in the little finger here two frets higher up than the third finger again on beats two and four two three four one now at this point I've been showing you one and two which is a good place to kind of start, but really it's the beat three and beat four where it's kind of emphasized, and the off beats, the ands, are possibly open strings or possibly just mute. So you end up with more like this. kind of a little bit looser. You have to start with this. Getting the push on the C, which is where we're playing the C chord on the and after four. That's called a push. But you can hear really what you hear is da 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 ba ba. Kind of the effect of it, but you want to be playing all of those eighth notes and those the in between is either a little click or it's sometimes that note. It's a little bit different through the tune, it's not exactly consistent, it shouldn't be. The big deal here is the push on the C and the energy that you put into it with the strumming. Because once you get up to full speed, you don't really hear whether it's like a, a muted or a note, and sometimes it can be either or both depending on which version or which day you're listening to the band player. So. <laughs> Sometimes I've just noticed I'm going... I'm moving my third finger back there on beat four. One and two and three and four. Now, that could be, again, a little bit like what's going on on the original recording, but I suspect that's something that I'm just kind of changing to be a bit more of a standard kind of rock and roll chord progression. Now... The trick, the truth of the matter, what's actually played on the original recording is that it's in open G tuning. Now, to get to full open G tuning is a little bit of a flaff, but you can learn the song just by tuning one note differently. And that is that we need to tune the A string down to the note G. So we're gonna play the open G and then the A string and tune it down one tone. Now once they're the same, you want to get a capo, you want to put the capo down on the second fret. Now if you, just to explain, if we're normally playing our rock and roll pattern like that with the A, what we do, we've done is tune this, the fifth string down a tone, so that's actually playing that note now, the second fret on the fifth string sounds the same as the open string did before. So when we put this down, on the second fret, we've now got our A chord. A little bit out of tune now from the capo. There we go. Often when you put a capo down, the capo squeezes the strings a little bit and makes it out of tune. Generally speaking, you want to put a capo on first and then do your tuning, but I'm just kind of showing you the quick and easy get around now. Now once you're doing that, you can do the rock and roll pattern with just one finger. Now this is the way that it's actually played on the original recording. Now, 
Now, I don't know what fingers he uses, and actually it doesn't really matter. You could use your first finger. I tend to use my little finger there once I've got the bar down. That's our C chord. Now. It's a bit of a jump if you go from there to there. It, it's one of those things where sometimes the movement that's not the most efficient is the best one because, it, again, it's about the energy that you're putting into this song. The energy and the vibe that you put in is much more important even than the notes, really. It's got to be, you know... <laughs> you know, getting those eighth notes really pumping hard. You should find that actually doing eighth notes that fast for that long becomes a bit of hard work for the arm. You should be really having to kind of dig in a little bit and kind of that that's the source of that energy is what the audience feels is when you're putting in that kind of vibe. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed these different stages, a beginner stage, an intermediate stage, and the as played on the record stages of this particular tune. Remember, there's hundreds more lessons over on the website. Go and check it out. And if you're over on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate your support. Hit the like and let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do some more Eagles of Death Metal, and if so, which one. I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.